Now our series on the No Child Left Behind law. In tonight's third and final report, how some of the country's best teachers are responding to the law. Here again is the work of our special correspondent for education, John Merrill. Solar energy is a huge topic, so it affects a lot of things. We first met Anthony Cody in 1999 when he was teaching science at Bret Hart Middle School in Oakland, California. There are some investigations that we've already begun using, the, using shadows and using the sun. A gifted teacher, Cody is nationally certified a distinction that only 2% of teachers ever attain. We are the base of the and Cody shared his expertise, mentoring other teachers. As a teacher, my first priority is my own 90-some students. But thinking broadly, I really try to have work with other teachers across the district. And I can reach more students in that way by supporting new teachers, trying to give them some fresh ideas to work with in the classroom. So the shadow starts where? from the base of the sun. Okay. Eight years have passed, and when we caught up with Anthony Cody this time, his outlook had changed. I'm seeing a lot of desperation on the part of teachers, a lot of frustration. Out of the group of six teachers that I've worked with for a long time, only one is still in the classroom. Cody believes the change in teacher morale dates back to 2002 and the No Child Left Behind law. No Child Left Behind has cast a pall over the whole urban educational system. It has created unrealistic expectations and punished us for not meeting them. The U.S. Secretary of Education, Margaret Spelling, says that before the law, many problems were being ignored. We were leaving thousands and thousands of millions of kids behind. We had the ostrich approach when it came to them, and now all of a sudden we have an intensity around meeting their needs, and it's making people uncomfortable. Under the law, children in grades 3 through 8 are expected to perform at grade level on multiple choice tests. What energy makes But many of Anthony Cody's students were already three and even four grades behind when they arrived in his classroom. If I say that No Child Left Behind sets unrealistic goals, then the very name of the law says that by implication I am leaving children behind. Okay. I'm not interested in leaving anyone behind. But I'm not going to say that I'm a failure because he came to me reading at the fourth grade level and I've only managed to move him up to the fifth or sixth grade level in one year. You know, I'm not going to say that he's a failure. I'm not going to say that I'm a failure. But the law says I'm a failure because he's not proficient. He's not at grade level. We wondered whether Anthony Cody's experience was unique. Could No Child Left Behind be affecting other outstanding teachers? We came here to Fairfax County, Virginia, one of the best public school districts in the nation. And behind me is Bailey's Elementary, one of its best schools. So today we will be building our own roller coaster. At Bailey's, we met Lynn Riggs, Fairfax County Teacher of the Year for 2006-2007. We've got gravity that we have to work with. Riggs is a science resource teacher. Besides teaching science, she also helps other teachers create challenging lessons. One of the things that I do every year with fifth graders, I do a roller coaster lesson. And really what it is is a physics lesson. Hmm. I'm trying to turn that bucket upside down, but how come those paper clips aren't falling out? Any good teaching involves connecting with the kids. Okay. And having something that is real, that's authentic. Something that will not only grab their attention, but will engage them so that they're learning. Like Anthony Cody in Oakland, Lynn Riggs is concerned about No Child Left Behind, particularly its reliance on multiple choice tests. So change the slope? I think that multiple choice bubble in tests are the easiest kind of test to give. Why are we spending all of this time training kids to give us the right answer when we should be training them to think? Bailey's prides itself on teaching children to think. This K-5 through school is in a neighborhood with a large immigrant population. With its focus on science and the arts, Bailey's attracts talented teachers and student applicants from all over the county. Do we come to school on a Sunday? No! Bailey's 800 students come from more than 40 countries and speak more than 20 languages. Now here's the challenge. I want you to show me interdependence in a way Totally different than English. I have 26 students, and 17 of them are second language learners in my classroom. 
And so we have to do things that are visual and with our bodies or else they won't understand. And so I try to do things that will play to their strengths, build up their weaknesses, and make them the most well-rounded learner they can be. But is No Child Left Behind looking for well-rounded learners? I don't think the law was intended to be about testing. I think the law was intended to be about the quality of our schools and our teachers. And I think that it's turned into being about statistics. Under No Child Left Behind, schools are evaluated by test scores, which are broken down by subgroups such as race, family income, and disability. If even one subgroup fails, the entire school is labeled as having failed to make adequate yearly progress. At Bailey's, teachers in the testing grades, three, four, and five, are feeling the pressure. Everybody has succumbed to drilling to learn how to take a multiple choice test. So that we've all modified our teaching, Fairfax County included, Bailey's Elementary included. Secretary Spelling says that should not be a problem. If you have a curriculum that is sound and strong and is what you want your kids to know and you're measuring against that, there's not a thing wrong with teaching to the test. Fairfax County Teacher of the Year said, our country needs people who can solve problems, be analytical. All that's lost in the high stakes tests and narrowing curriculum. Well, I mean, I guess what my, my question is, is that person advocating that we go back to not finding out how poorly or how well our students are being served, that we eliminate measurement of kids? But Bailey's teachers don't believe that one test is an accurate measure of student progress. As a teacher, I'm continually assessing my students, and I believe that they're much more authentic assessments than a standardized test. I don't come in every day and babysit. I'm a teacher. We have significant learning that goes on every day. It just might not be shown on that test that someone developed at the testing place. We're going to find out about different types of energy. Lynn Riggs ran into a different problem when her fifth grade students did a project on deep sea vents, underwater volcanoes. One of the things that is absolutely fascinating about this fabulous ecosystem that is miles beneath the ocean, there is no sunlight there. What is it that's driving this ecosystem? What is this chemosynthesis? How does this work? I've got to be able to explain it to fifth graders. Riggs says her students love tackling such a difficult subject. But the kicker is, this spring, as the kids were preparing for their state tests, one of the questions was about food chains. Of course, the right answer is the sun. And I'm thinking, great, they're going to get the question wrong. I've taught them too much. They're going to be thinking, but what about the deep sea vents? Chemosynthesis. There's no sunlight <laughs> that deep down in the ocean. It's dark. And testing pressure is getting worse. Earlier this year, Fairfax County lost a battle with the U.S. Department of Education. As a result, Bailey's teachers had to give grade-level English tests to immigrant students, regardless of their ability to understand English. I can tell you right now that my entire class will not pass. I have children who came to America a year ago that are being tested. I have children who have illiterate parents, so when they go home, no one can help them with their reading. Do you fear that Bailey's will not make adequate yearly progress? I don't fear it. I know it. Chances are good that we will not be making adequate progress in at least one or two of our, of our um, categories. And what will that mean? It will mean we are a failing school. I'm joined with my colleagues today from across the country. Far beyond Bailey's uh, Elementary, teacher frustration is building. My name is Maddie Fennell, and I'm the Teacher of the Year for the state of Nebraska. In an unprecedented action, 50 of the 2007 State Teachers of the Year met in Washington, D.C. this April to propose major changes to No Child Left Behind. We know that America's public education system is in need of repair. Yet classroom teachers have been denied a seat at the table when it comes to shaping and implementing the most influential education reform, No Child Left Behind. If No Child Left Behind stays the way it is, I think the level of frustration is going to cause people to say, you know what, this is just not worth it. I love my children, but I can't continue to do this 
when professionally I know this is what's not in the best interest of my students. We're just going to have many more people leaving the profession. In Oakland, Anthony Cody, after 18 years in the classroom, has already quit. I left teaching because the morale at the school had fallen. There wasn't a feeling of optimism. You miss teaching. In my collaborative research group, we used to talk about, wouldn't it be great if we could start our own school? <laughs> we don't talk about that anymore. But you haven't given up. No, I haven't given up, but um, I can't, I can't see, I can't, I haven't felt effective in the classroom lately. And um, I'd like to go back, but I'd like to know that I could be effective and that the school would be effective and that the school would be honored and that I would be honored for the work that I do. Prediction. Who's got a hypothesis? And what about Lynn Riggs, the Fairfax County Teacher of the Year? Knowing what you know now about No Child Left Behind, if you were starting over, would you be a classroom teacher? I'm not a classroom teacher now. But I'm the a, ideal I'm job. A, yeah. I have the ideal job. I am a resource teacher. I do not have to administer the, the state test. It does not impact my job. I, will, I would not go back to the classroom today. As the school year wound down, students and teachers at Bailey celebrated the arts. The sort of basic idea of our meal was legacy, what people would remember us about us. Nothing here looked like failure, but the teachers knew the all-important test scores would not come in until mid-August. Three teachers of the year will answer questions online about their experiences with the No Child Left Behind law. You can participate in that forum, and you can also watch John's previous stories by going to our website at cbs.org.